Hello, and welcome to the Masterclass Cloud Series presented by Rubrik and produced by Actual Tech Media. Our topic today is protecting Microsoft 365 data. My name is Scott Becker. I'm from Actual Tech Media, and I'm excited to be your moderator for this special event. Now, before we get to today's great content, there are a few things you should know about this uh, Masterclass webinar. First off, we want this to be a very educational event for you, so we encourage any and all questions in the questions box in our webinar control panel. Not only will we have team members responding to questions during the live event, but we'll also have a dedicated Q&A session at the end of the presentation where we'll discuss in greater detail some of the top questions that you ask. In the handout section um, of your webinar control panel, you'll find that we are offering for download uh, several resources. I especially want to call your attention to the link to the, the rubric Microsoft 365 demo environment. You'll be hearing more about that during the presentation, so I encourage you to bookmark that URL for later. Also, feel free to share that and the other resources with your friends and colleagues. Third, at the end of this webinar event, we'll be awarding a $300 Amazon gift card to one lucky attendee on the live event. If you're watching this webinar on demand, I'm sorry the drawing has already occurred. If you are the winner, you can choose to donate the value of that gift card to one of our selected charities. Thanks to generous prize winners on previous actual tech media events, thousands of dollars have been donated to charity. So thank you in advance if you make that choice today. The official terms and conditions of today's prize drawing can be found at actualtechmedia.com. Just scroll to the bottom and you'll find the prize terms and conditions link there. Now, finally, one of the best benefits of this event is the opportunity to ask a question of our expert presenters. To help encourage your questions, we have a special additional prize for you. That's another Amazon gift card, this one for $50 for the best question. At the end of the event, we'll look at all the questions, pick out the very best one, and contact the prize winner. And with that, let's get to the master class. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our presenter today. It's Drew Russell, who is a technical product manager at Rubrik. And now I'm going to turn things over to Drew. Appreciate everybody taking a few minutes out of their schedule today to jump on our webinar. My name is Drew Russell, and I am part of the Microsoft security practice here at Rubrik. I want to spend a few minutes with everybody today talking about Microsoft 365. We're going to cover you know, what's the high level landscape look like from 365 these days and, and why that translates into more and more of our rubric customers looking at 365 data protection seriously for probably the first time, uh, you know, since they've been a, a part of that, that platform. And then dig a little, a little bit deeper into the architecture aspects of how we protect 365 itself. So let's jump right into it here. Um, you know, like I said, wanted to cover what does today's Microsoft 365 ecosystem look like? Part of my job is talking to customers across the globe, you know, every industry you can think of, every customer size you can think of. And they're all telling me, you know, almost the exact same thing. Now more than ever, their business critical operations are flowing through Microsoft 365. And by its nature, that means more and more business critical data lives in the 365 ecosystem. And if we look at the, the stats Microsoft provides around this, it tells the exact same story. Just this exponential growth that they've seen um, you know, over the last two years with that only increasing with hybrid work kind of being the new default de facto standard that's in place, um, you know, again, kind of across the globe here. The other thing that almost all of our customers are telling us is, you know, they have a very limited last line in defense um, for this data. And, and, you know, that translates to, um, you know, 74% of the, the folks surveyed in this case have no data protection in place for this business critical data um, in 365. And since, you know, there is that la limited last line of defense and, and, you know, all that business critical important data living in the ecosystem, Today's threat groups view Microsoft 365 as a gold mine. And this is a, um, a direct quote from some of our partners over at Mandiant. If you're not familiar with Mandiant, they are one of the industry's leading cybersecurity uh, incident response organizations. They're basically who gets called if the Fortune 500s of the world are breached. They go in and determine how that breach happened and then help the customer get back up and running. So these are the folks with the boots on the ground, um, you know, analyzing real-world attack situations. 
and they're you know across their board they're seeing a plethora of money um, being spent on understanding Microsoft 365 and then simultaneously how to attack it by these threat groups. That's one of the reasons why it's very easy to go out and find headline after headline, you know, of these external attacks happening, um, you know, across the board. It's not just one organization experiencing, it's not just two, um, you know, 70% plus of organizations have experienced some kind of uh, attack happening in the 365 ecosystem. The other kind of really important thing to remember here, um, you know, in the overall context of Microsoft 365 data protection is it's just, not, it's not just these external threats you have to keep in mind. It's also, also these internal situations that can happen, whether it is, you know, a rogue admin going in and, you know, causing havoc or like this example from KPMG, where they want to a, um, you know, apply a, a retention policy. And if you're not familiar with those, we'll kind of cover those next. They apply that retention policy to um, 145,000 users accidentally. And you know, with a click of a button, all of their chat history was deleted. So different situations like that um, really kind of have to be combined with these external threats that we're seeing in the ecosystem today to really understand you know, what the overall threat landscape looks like. So the next thing you, know, you have to look at here is how does Microsoft look at data protection for Microsoft 365, you know, specifically zero trust data security. If you're not familiar with that term, in essence, it means, um, you know, never trust, always verify. And this slide is, in essence, a copy and paste directly from the Microsoft documentation, where they are focused around complying with legal and regulatory standards. And the way they have that categorized is into these kind of four broad areas. And each of these areas have a multitude of tools underneath it to help achieve these goals. So let's kind of um, start with the left side here and work our way through the, the flow here. So first step here is pretty obvious, right? You have to understand what data lives in 365 in order to protect it. Once you understand that data, you can start doing things like apply different protection policies to encrypt it, to restrict access. Once that's in place, the next step is, you know, how do I present that data from being leaked accidentally? Or how do I detect different risky behavior on top of that data? And then the last section here is um, govern your data, where the main goal is to retain the information that you need and then delete the rest. Um, you know, that way it can't be affected in any kind of, um, you know, situation. And this is really the, the main area I want to um, focus on here. This is essentially where we see our customers um, focused in, in terms of a core kind of data protection aspect in terms of backup and recovery. So dig into the govern, govern your data section, right? This is again for compliance and regulatory requirements, not for backup recovery. And this is by design for Microsoft. The way they have this broken up is in two, two kind of broad categories here. So uh, information governance tools and records management tools. Information governance tools are kind of the, the broadest area here. This is your classic business data that would live in ecosystem, PowerPoints, PDFs, you know, everything that you use to run your organization on a day in day out basis. The main goal with the tools under this category is, you know, keep what you need and delete what you don't. You know, like I said earlier, you know, the concept here being if the data is not present, it can't be, um, you know, accessed accidentally. It can't be, um, you know, deleted by a rogue admin or, you know, some kind of threat actor that got access to your environment. The next section here for records management is really focused around, uh, actually, let me go back here. So the main tool that customers use in this information government section is retention policies. Um, vast majority are going to be familiar with these. These are kind of on by default. In essence, what you do is create a, um, a, a, a policy that says, keep your data for X period of time. After that time period, it passes, delete that data from your ecosystem. And this is all automatically handled on the back end for Microsoft. So really a set for get tool. All right, so going back to records management here, these are very specific use cases, kind of the, the, the diamonds here uh, in, in the graphic. And the tools around this are very heavily centric around different legal and compliance tools or compliance regulations. And then other kind of very critical business um, data that can't be affected in some safer form. The main tools we see customers using in this case is litigation hold. Pretty self-explanatory, you know, what litigation hold is, 
mark some piece of data as being on hold. Once that data is marked, if anything is deleted or modified, a copy is again automatically uh, created on the back end in the 365 ecosystem so it can be accessed later on if needed. And this is either through you know, their, their extensive e-discovery suite that comes part of 365 or you know, exporting it out to um, you know, the, the, the corporate lawyers involved here. All right, so now that we have kind of a, a high level understanding of what these native tools are, the, the question that's really driving all of the, the, the conversations today around Microsoft 365 protection is, what would you do if you're hit by a ransomware attack? Or what would you do if you experienced a rogue admin or um, you know, somebody on your internal teams accidentally deleting the business critical fires in your ecosystem? And these questions are, are you know, a top-down question usually. So they're being asked by the C-suite, they're being asked by the board of directors. And then probably just as importantly, or maybe even more importantly, is being asked by the cybersecurity insurance auditors. If you guys haven't had the, uh, I'll call it the fun of, of dealing with cybersecurity insurance, um, you know, the, the short version here is it is um, very difficult to get these days because so many payouts have been happening. The, the rates are just astronomical in this case. So, you know, they're, you know, if you're going through and, you know, if your company's looking at this insurance or trying to de decrease your premiums, the, the auditors are going through and asking these questions. You know, it's, do you have this business critical data living in 365? You know, and if your Azure environment is compromised or your Microsoft 365 environment is compromised, what would you do in these cases? So, you know, in order to answer that question, right, you kind of have to understand what this threat landscape looks like and, and how these native tools enable to recover from there. So what we've seen happening is, you know, it's, it's your core parameters being breached. It's not 365 itself. You know, they have um, a very, very solid platform in place in, in terms of their security mechanisms, but that 365 environment is still connected to the rest of your ecosystem. So threat actors can get into, into your ecosystem through you know, any number of means. Once they have that, you know, we see them work their way up the stack to where they can get global admin access. At that point, they obviously have keys to the kingdom. So they can do different things like exfiltrate the data off of your um, platform, send it to their command and control servers, and then delete that data. Once that happens, you'll get the ransomware note, and then you know you have to figure out how to get that data back and get it back quickly. So you know the, the two options you have in place are to restore from those retention policies that we talked about earlier. Um, in this case, though, they are you know you know since they're not designed for backup recovery, they can actually be used as an attack surface to your ecosystem. So like we mentioned earlier from Mandiant and, and their you know their take on the today's threat actors knowing the Microsoft ecosystem um, extremely well. You know, they're familiar with these retention policies. They went through, created a new one that said, find any data in the ecosystem that is older than a day old and automatically delete it. And just like that, everything is erased from the ecosystem. The other option here is that litigation hold we talked about. At the end of the day though, litigation hold is not designed for match protection. You know, if you kind of think back to the image we had there was that small subset of those diamonds where Microsoft would apply these litigation holds. At the same time, you know, litigation hold by its nature also nullifies, you know, some of the other aspects of these native tools. You know, very easy to talk about retention policy here again, where, you know, the, the goal is to remove the data from your ecosystem. That way it can't be compromised. In this case, litigation hold, um, you know, kind of negates that. The, the, the data still lives in your, in, in your environment in this case. So basically that leaves you with no good options and you're forced to pay that ransom to have you know, those threat actors send you back your data to get it back up and running. The other really important part to remember here is it's not just your 355 ecosystem that's being attacked in this case, it's the rest of your cloud workloads, it's the rest of your data center workloads simultaneously being breached and attacked here. So how does rubric kind of come into play here and how can we help in these situations? So, you know, the, the, the most important aspect of this is being able to create this logical air gap between your Microsoft environment and then the backups that are stored in Rubrik. So this is a full SaaS offering. Um, you know, we'll go into a little bit of the details here, um, here in a second, but in essence, we reach out to Microsoft 365, pull the data back into Rubrik, and then have that fully segmented from your environment. That way, if threat actors do get those global admin credentials, they don't have access to your backups. They can't delete those. So they'll go through and, um, you know, 
delete your data. But in this case, you know, once you get the range of note, if you have rubric in place, you're able to actually get that data back up and running since it's in a, um, you know, a fully isolated cloud vault on, on the rubric side. At the same time, you know, it's not just being able to recover your Microsoft 365 environment in this case, it's being able to unify that protection across all your workloads, unify those restoration jobs. That way you can ensure, um, you know, your entire environment is back up and running. The really important part to, to, to kind of out here too, it, this isn't a, you know, rubric versus Microsoft story. Um, and in fact, it, it's quite literally the exact opposite. Microsoft has an amazing suite of tools focused around compliance. Our customers use them on a regular basis and more importantly, they use them in tandem with what Rupert brings to the table. So the overall recommendation, right, is to leverage everything Microsoft has in place, you know, identify your data, restrict the access, have the encryption in place. But what Rubric does is allow you to protect from those external and internal threats that we mentioned earlier and do it in a way that is fully automated from a management perspective and then being able to get as granular as needed from the restoration jobs and then do that in bulk. Um, you know, so worst case scenario happens, your entire 365 ecosystem is blown away from a data perspective. There's all that business critical data that you need to get back up and running. So Rubrik allows you to do that in an easy to manage fashion. And that's exactly why um, probably, I don't know, a month and a half, two months ago, we announced that Microsoft took an equity stake in Rubrik, specifically around a, a kind of core joint mission statement, mission statement up here in the right, up on the left, I should say, all around being able to take a concept of zero trust data security and apply it to each of our joint customers. And really all that is being driven around, you know, 2021 main imperative of ransomware. And this is like we talked about earlier, it's a C-suite level conversation. It's a board level, you know, top of mind across the board. So, you know, this investment from, you know, Microsoft allows us to do a whole bunch of things on, on the back end you know, in terms of ensuring we have adequate protection in place, you know, leveraging their engineering resources, their product management teams to, to make sure, you know, the, the joint products we have in place meet their standards, meet the rubric standards, and allow our customers to have a holistic data protection solution, uh, you know, for any kind of internal external threat scenarios. So the fun part here, how does it work? So first and foremost, security is, top of mind when we design the solution. So if we work our way through the stack here, um, you know, start with being able to authenticate into your Microsoft 365 ecosystem. All of this is done through what Microsoft calls modern authentication. It's their implementation of OAuth. Um, what that means is we never have access to your credentials. Microsoft gives us a one-time access token. And then from there, we'll create what are called enterprise applications to enable our API access into the 365 ecosystem. And then those enterprise applications are scoped specifically to the API permissions we need. Once we have those in place, we'll reach out to 365, like I said, ingest that data into the Rubrik platform, all fully encrypted at flight, and then land that data in a Rubrik Cloud Vault that is also fully encrypted. Um, you know, the, the important aspect here is that this is fully isolated from your environment. You know, if you're 365 or Azure or um, you know, really your main environment is compromised. These backups are secured in a rubric controlled instance. Once that initial configuration is placed, you can take our SLA policies and apply those to uh, each of the high level applications. So think of applying SLA policy to OneDrive to SharePoint Exchange. That way you have a base level of protection in place. And I guess to take a step back here too, if you're not familiar with the SLA policies, what they allow you to do is define your, your business use case and logic for, for backups. Take a backup every four hours, keep it for 30 days. You know, Take a, um, a backup for a month, keep that for a year. And this kind of automatically handle that on the back end. You can also get down to the individual user level um, and get as grand there as you want to with these SLA policies. That way you can ensure your VIPs, your top priority users, have a more frequent backup frequency than maybe the intern who started yesterday. When talking uh, about Microsoft 365 protection, the, the most important aspect to remember here is it's an extremely complex API system that we have to work with here. If I relate this back to the on-prem world and, and taking like a VMware snapshot, you know, we'll call the, the, the specific API for snapshot and then ingest the data into rubric. 
there's no equivalent of a snapshot API in, in, the, in Microsoft 365. So there is uh, you know, four or five different APIs that we leverage on the back end. The, the main one being Microsoft Graph. Uh, Microsoft Graph allows us to talk to the individual applications through a single endpoint. So then each of those individual applications also have a specific API dedicated to them. So there's a OneDrive API, an Exchange API, et cetera. And each of these APIs have their pros and cons. So which one works best in situation A, which one works best in situation B, and at the same time, what happens if these API fails? You know, they're used by something like 300 million users across the globe. Um, so it's not a matter of if the API will fail, it, it's um, you know, a matter of when. So how do we automatically handle those failures transparently and ensure that we are always ingesting your data according to the SLA you um, define as part of your production policy? The other really important part here is eking out the performance of these Microsoft APIs. So, you know, since they are globally available, Microsoft does an amazing job of, um, maybe amazing job, not the best way to describe it, but they very, very heavily throttle these APIs. You know, if we're talking to a single connection point in a 365, we can hit those throttling limits almost instantaneously. Um, which is exactly why our approach is to load balance our connections into the 365 ecosystem across multiple enterprise applications. And if you remember, these are the enterprise applications are how we have API access into 365. So we're able to achieve a, um, you know, an industry leading level of performance to get your data back as, as quickly as possible here. The other part to kind of keep in mind here too is the underlying in, in, uh, architecture uh, uh, you know, plays a, a pretty important role in this as well. So under the covers, we're using the Azure Kubernetes service to dynamically scale up our compute workloads to meet your demand. So, um, you know, for example, if you're taking a snapshot, we'll create a new container, or if you're doing a new um, resource job, create another container. And we can automatically scale those up to whatever the, the you know, whatever limits we need to ensure we're meeting your, your performance and reliability expectations. And at the same time, all of this applies to the rest of your ecosystem, whether it is in Azure or in your data center with vSphere. You can take these same SLA policies and apply them to those workloads as well, and then utilize the Rubrik Players inter interface here, which is our SaaS-based application, to manage the, um, the recovery of those workloads in, in the event of an attack. So that's all I really wanted to cover today. Um, you know, the, the, the main goal was to make sure you have an understanding of what today's ecosystem looks like for 365, both in terms of its overall usage and um, you know, what the threat landscape looks like for that and how Rubrik and Microsoft have joined together to offer a solution that allows you to take advantage of you know, best of both worlds. The native tools for Microsoft that are focused around compliance and regulatory issues and then the core backup and recovery that Rubrik offers to protect you from internal and external threats. The other thing too is we're going to, um, you know, I know we talked about doing a demo here. We actually have a new guided work through that we're gonna send out as a leave behind here. Um, you can get hands-on access to the player's interface and, and walk through uh, a demo yourself. In my opinion, uh, it's way easier to understand that ecosystem by clicking through and getting actual hands-on time. So we will um, send that out here uh, after the webinar as well. So appreciate everybody's time today. Um, and I am in chat here if you guys have any questions. So please feel free to throw those out. All right, super. Yeah, that was a great presentation from Drew. In addition to having Drew in the chat, I'm also pleased to bring on Bill Gerling. Uh, principal architect at Rubrik, who's also here to answer your questions. Um, Bill, great to hear for you. Uh, great to have you here. Are you uh, are you ready for some questions? Yeah, absolutely, Scott. I'm here. Super. Um, this first question uh, is uh, we've actually got a, lo a lot rolling in here, um, which is uh, which is fantastic. Um, but. Uh, Vu is asking, is Rubrik a complete solution uh, to protect Microsoft 365 data? Like, and I assume by Rubrik there, he means um, what, uh, you know, what Drew was talking about there. Or are there other Rubrik products that are required for, for this Microsoft 365 protection to work? 
Yeah, no, this is a complete solution and even more so um, the platform that protects this M365 data is also capable of protecting workloads that reside in Microsoft Azure. Uh, we can protect, you know, other other workloads of the Microsoft ecosystem like SQL Server and Hyper-V and then even things that out that lie outside of that ecosystem. So if you think about other public cloud platforms, other virtual machine formats, database engines, so on and so forth. So we really do have sort of a holistic approach to data management across all these different boundaries uh, from a single control plane. Super. Uh, next question comes from from Bradford, who's asking if, if Rubrik is a certified Microsoft partner, uh, you know, Microsoft 365 specifically. Um, I'm, I'm going to assume that's a yes, given that, uh, you know, Drew was talking about Microsoft's you know, taking an equity stake in the company, which it doesn't do in, in very many partners. Um, but uh, anything you could say about certification? Yeah, we are we are credentialed uh, with Microsoft. Obviously, as you had stated, Scott, the investment sort of uh, goes above and beyond even even the credentialing process. And then to take it a step further, um, this offering that you've seen demonstrated today is an offering that's hosted uh, and all of the backend infrastructure in addition to the control plane. So the data plane, um, the compute, you know, ingest layer, all of this is owned, managed, provisioned, life cycled by Rubrik. And uh, that that platform was built sort of using best of breed approaches that were co-engineered with uh, Microsoft engineering teams. And that's sort of what led us to take the approach that we did on the APIs and make some architectural decisions that we've made. So one thing that you will see with our platform is that uh, you know if you compare us to other players in the space, we're often much more reliant and much more performant uh, than than our counterparts, and that's largely uh, in in part due to the the co engineering efforts and, and Microsoft's sort of skin in the game with us. Yeah, no, that's that's tremendous, and it, I, I have to say, as I was the editor in chief of uh, Redmond Channel Partner Magazine for. 15 years, um, pretty much focused exclusively on the Microsoft Partner Channel. And, you know, there are hundreds of thousands of partners, Microsoft partners, you know, in their program. Um, you know, there are, you know, thousands that have certification. There are, you know, dozens that have like an equity investment and sort of that level of, uh, you know, co-engineering going on. So, um, you know, really, really good stuff, really, really tight. Um, uh, let's see, just scanning through a couple here. Um, we have one from Warren and, and one from Kenneth, and, and I'll kind of combine these because it, it, it's it's an interesting question. So Drew was talking a little bit about the, the encryption. You know, Kenneth is asking, is the backup encrypted? But then Warren's question is, can Rubrik scan for certain types of data within the Microsoft docs? And so I, I wonder if you could kind of recap a little bit uh, about how the encryption works and, and how, at least to me, it looked like the, you know, rubric was kind of blind to the data, which is a, a feature, not a bug. Um, but is there a way to also look for particular file types sort of despite the encryption? Um, I, I hope that question makes sense. The way I pull it, does, it does make sense. And um, so what I'll say is, uh, from an encryption at rest and in play perspective, absolutely, right? Like uh, our ingest is all done using uh, the M365 APIs and using their official SDKs and all of that stuff is TLS encrypted by default and strongly authenticated. So you can rest easy there. Uh, at rest, you know, we're using on the Azure side, we're using Azure Key Vault and we're using um, long key lengths and sort of appropriate uh, technical controls on the key side there to make sure that everything is is copacetic in terms of who's got access to the keys, how the keys are utilized, how they're rotated, so on and so forth. Um, so, so yeah, data definitely protected in flight and at rest. And in terms of introspection, um, we don't have that capability on the M365 data sets currently, but we do have that capability on other data sets. And uh, without tipping the hand too much, like I think it would probably be safe for a layperson to assume that if we've got the ability to sort of peek into these um, file type data sets uh, from NAS workloads or VM backups where we can we can basically, without getting too laborious about it, we can peek in, we can say, hey, look, uh, is the change rate or the data change pattern anomalous relative to some baseline we've established? Or similarly, you know, is there some data set here that doesn't belong here? We have both of those capabilities. 
um, with other workloads today. And reason would dictate that on a you know not so long timeline, those those capabilities might trickle down into these data sets as well, so that we've got a holistic story across the board. Um, so so not today, but uh, but I would I would likely expect it to come sometime in the future. Okay, super. Yeah, and, and thanks for making sense of my uh, somewhat jumbled question. I appreciate it. So um, this next one comes from uh, also from Vu, and, and this is an interesting question given the, the relationship you've got with, with Microsoft here. Who do I call uh, to get support? Is it is it Rubik or Microsoft? I, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about about how that that works. Yeah, so it's so it's Rubric, and then we've got sort of expeditious uh, escalation paths into the Microsoft Teams if we need to engage or interact with them for some purpose. A good example would be in um, some sort of failure scenario where you had to do on mass restores. Uh, maybe the you know Drew is talking about how we provision these enterprise applications and we parallelize the API calls against them, and that lets us be really performant in terms of ingest and restore. Um, but maybe you know in a in a scenario where you have to do on mass restores maybe we haven't necessarily scaled to that point yet right and so mm -hmm. so then then there may be a scenario where we've got to either do a bunch of provisioning to recover expeditiously or we need to get throttled less and there's actually been scenarios like that in the past and what we do is we is we jointly work with microsoft to to essentially uncap these apis in very specific circumstances. Um, so that's kind of an, the, the answer to the question is for our product, you engage rubric and then our partnership levels and sort of our, 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 our joint investment in this platform allows us to on the back end very quickly escalate and engage with Microsoft if we need to. Okay. Um, there's another question here. I'm, I'm actually going to grab uh, from Bradford. Any idea who the vendor was uh, for the recent ransomware attack on Sinclair Broadcasting Group? It seemingly took them almost a full week to recover. So, Bradford, I kicked that over to our, the team on our, our recently launched ransomware.org site, um, and uh, and here's what they came back to me with. Um, it, it, some information that that went up on on CNN from Alan Liska, who's actually a, a contributor on that site and has written our new ransomware book. Uh, but Alan says, according to someone that he's been in direct contact with, uh, who's part of the recovery team at Sinclair, the company was hit with uh, Macaw ransomware, which appears to be a new ransomware from Evil Corp. So um, it doesn't really answer the the vendor question, but uh, it, it gets into a little bit of of where that one. Uh, seems to be coming from. Um, so, Bill, back to you. This next question from from Raj uh, is is wondering if the disaster protection in Microsoft 365 includes proactive checks uh, to ensure that the ransomware infections have been fully removed before restoring the affected systems. Um, and I, I guess I'd expand that a bit to say, like, you know, what's sort of rubrics. Um, you know, best practices in those in those instances as well, you know, as far as, you know, trying to make sure that you're not backing up ransomware infections or, um, you know, or, or ways to uh, sort of stage things. Um, what, what are you telling customers? Yeah, so I would say the first thing is, is uh, protect often and retain at, for as long as, as, as you possibly can. And our licensing model and our implementation makes it really easy to do that without having to be concerned about costs. The second thing that I would say is uh, obviously our tooling is, is recovery tooling and we do have these capabilities coming where we will sort of on the secondary data set alert you that some anomalous activity is, is maybe occurring and give you some idea of when that might occur and what the blast radius was so that you can recover. But all of that stuff is post-process, even, even these sort of future things uh, from the M365 perspective that I'm discussing. Um, and, and so I would, I would definitely advise that there be sort of zero day in line, real time monitoring and tooling in your, in your stack that allows you to identify these things in addition to using tooling like, like we have uh, available for some of these other data sets. Because once these events take place, and I know that there's dormant ransomware, and I know that there's time-bombed ransomware, and, and all of these different flavors and nasty permutations of, uh, of the attack out there today, but, but it really comes down to realizing when you've been attacked as soon as possible, and then going back to a known good recovery point. Hopefully, you've got one. That's kind of where we play. 
uh, mm -hmm. as quickly as possible, making sure that those restores are expeditious. So it's sort of a two-pronged thing, right? You need these real-time monitoring systems, you need these purpose-built security tools, and then you need rich, robust, modern air gap data protection so that you can very quickly recover in the event of an attack or, or even a mistake. Excellent. Got it. Uh, this next question comes from, from Eric. Uh, and Eric says, our organization is still on-prem. We're considering a move to the cloud. I'd imagine both have their own sets of risk. Um, how, how does your product offering help alleviate those risks in either scenario? Um, you know, so just, I guess, to expand on that a bit, you know, how does, how does rubric sort of, you know, change some of the calculations about the, the safety of the, the cloud versus on-prem? Yeah, so what it all comes down to is if you think about cloud adoption and you think about sort of the diversity of technologies that are in play, the pace with which some of these platforms grow and evolve once you start tinkering with them, the different consumption models, right? You've got like pure IaaS, you've got SaaS, you've got sort of this middle ground in PaaS. Like there's all these different consumption models. There's probably legacy data sets out there. There's, there's essentially this fragmentation taking place and my advice to you is look for tooling, and this is not just in the data protection space, even though I've got a vested interest in evangelizing that point from this perspective, um, but, but in general with cloud adoption, look for tooling that is, that is feature rich and pluggable into all of the elements of your environment, right? Especially your tier zeros and your tier ones. Look for technology that is API driven and extensible and uh and and look for technology that is that is mature and scalable to whatever boundary you think your organization is going to grow to over the lifetime of the investment and what i would postulate is is that rubric as a company has made significant investments in making sure that we've got data management tooling that is capable feature rich and sort of platform native regardless of where you're interacting. So if you if you go protect a vSphere VM with us, you're gonna use the same policy model, the same event stream, the same report database, the same role-based access control, as if you go protect an M365 workload, as if you go protect an Azure VM or a VM in some other cloud or an enterprise database. And that's important because all these platforms and all these technologies have nuances to how they're implemented, how they're protected, how they're recovered, and abstracting that away and allowing the operator to just distill down to the important elements of their responsibilities, right? Is my, have I, am I seeing all my data? Is all my data protected? Is all my data recoverable? Can I prove that? Those are the important things in, in operational tools like we've discussed today. And, and really complexity is the enemy when you're dealing with those types of things. So that'd be the advice that I would give there. Okay, great. Uh, next question here. Uh, is Rubrik able to provide customers with compliance evidence if requested? For example, say a customer is required to produce evidence of PCI DSS comp compliance. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the platform itself uh, has various industry credentials that we can share, you know, with the right mutual agreements in place. Um, so we can we can certainly share uh, credentials on our SAS control plane and whatnot. And then uh, we also have this event stream and this reporting database within our tool that can be used to further satisfy those requirements it, as our capabilities sort of help you meet them internally. So uh, a good example is the SLA compliance report that we can run where essentially uh, when you protect workloads using rubric, you build these policies, we call them SLA domain policies, and they sort of define the RPO for the workload that they're assigned to. And uh, we have uh, means by which that across all your sort of cloud and, and data boundaries, you can run, go in, you can run a report and the report will basically say, here's the policy that's assigned to each of your workloads and here's how many days those workloads have been compliant with the assigned policy. So just right there, you know, you set the window on that report and you've essentially got a report that you can hand to an auditor that says, I've got recovery points on each and every one of these days in accordance with these policies and these policies map to these business requirements. You know, is there anything else I can do for you? So uh, yes, we're credentialed and certified and yes, we can help you credential and certify yourselves by means of our workflows. Tremendous, all right, great. Uh, let's take two more questions. This one's from Paul. Uh, he's asking if, if Rubrik offers uh, air gapping or immutable service options in terms of Microsoft 365 data protection backup. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the data sets are air gapped today away from your source Azure tenant. That's a big value prop of our implementation. Um, the point being, if, if your environment is attacked, the attacker is not going to be able to laterally move into our backup data set and compromise that as well. That's the sort of the bottom line up front there. And then uh, in, in terms of immutability, uh, the storage is completely segregated away from any customer interaction or any would-be attacker interaction. So it's, it, it is immutable in the sense that it's inaccessible. Uh, and soon we will be bringing kind of like hard retention locks and, and things of that to the, to the back end as well so that you can further have peace of mind that, uh, that things are completely and irrevocably locked down. Okay, great. And the last question comes from Ned, who uh, is a kind of a perfect way to close. He says, how could someone get more information or, or even training on how to better protect um, Microsoft 365 data within our environment? And, and maybe there's an opportunity as well to talk about the, uh, uh, you know, the, the demo link that's, that's there in the handout section as well. Yeah, I would, I would certainly check the handout section out and run through that reprise demo and that reprise demo will hand you off to uh, other sources of information. Obviously, you can go to www.rubric.com or reach out to sales at rubric.com and we'll have someone get in touch with you. But the, the reprise demo that, uh, that is, is sort of linked out in the, in the notes here is actually an interactive sort of click through provision and, and lifecycle process within our tool. So not only would you can you use that as, as sort of a jumping off point to data sheets or interaction with Rubric as an organization? But that, that demo actually gives you like a hands on the keyboard uh, driver seat experience with linking in a subscription and beginning to protect it. And so you can very quickly get a feel for, you know, the important things about these tools that are really hard to articulate on webinars. Like what is, what is my user experience like when I'm in the in the user interface, you know, how clean does it feel? How intuitive does it feel? How simple is it? Like, these are things that we try to speak to, but everybody says their tool is simple. Everyone says that it's easy to use and it is if you know how to use it. Right. But, but I would just yeah. say, check out that, check out that reprise uh, uh, demo because, because uh, literally you could, you could hand it to a 12 year old and say, go back up M365. And I suspect they'd be able to pull it off. Well then, uh, then maybe I'll check it out if if that's the level <laughs> <laughs> of skill that's required. I'm, I'm definitely gonna check that out. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, Bill, thanks thanks for all the insights here today. Um, I really appreciate your your time. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, for emceeing us here, and thanks to all the attendees for spending their uh, their afternoon with us. I know that the time is is a finite resource, and we appreciate you giving us a little bit of it. Great. Yes, absolutely. And before we wrap up, we have one more piece of business. It's the $300 Amazon gift card prize drawing. And the winner of the gift card is Gary Mulhern from California. Congratulations, Gary. We'll be in touch to get you your card. And with that, on behalf of the actual tech media team, I want to thank Drew for putting together a really informative masterclass and, and Bill for all his insights here on the uh, on this this marathon Q&A, which was which was great. I'd also like to thank Rubric for making this event possible. And last but not least, um, I'd like to thank all of you for attending and, and for all your great questions that, uh, that led to this great conversation today. So that concludes today's event. Have a great rest of your day.